Hi everybody, I am Lady Stars and Fire. My real name is Michelle Espinosa. And, well, this is supposed to be the weekly healing messages for January 14th through the 26th. And I am going over the information, you know, what I'm getting from Spirit and from the astrology for this time period, the 14th through the 26th. But, see, Spirit's just redirecting me, so to speak. Um, I, I don't, I don't know how else to put it, because what I'm more or less getting from them is, yeah, 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 so what with that? The big picture, please, <laughs> is what I'm, is what I'm getting from them. They're like, yeah, yeah, go ahead with the 14th through the 26th, but can we address the big picture here? And that's what I'm really going after, because Spirit's been drilling it into my head for you know, like a week now, pretty much ever since January started, and I couldn't figure out what it was, and I've been able to put it all together now, and that's why I'm getting the can, can, big picture, please. You know, this is a weekly healing messages, yes, but this is also, let's open our eyes to the year, period, to the year, to the next upcoming years and realize the platform is being set now. Spirit is very much giving me the where the earth is 5D now. We've gone 5D. Now, not everybody has actually risen awaken and come out of 3D. Not everybody has actually matured soulfully into that 5D, but the Earth's vibration is forcing us to come up and out of it. You see, I have I have two really good friends and I work at the Grove of Bright Blessings a lot here in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And Cheryl and Norman, I was talking to them the other day and I'm like, everywhere I go, in spirit, I am seeing, you know, replays, like playbacks in time of the 20s. And they were talking about the clothing, the dress, dresses, prohibition. I'm like, oh my God, the hats. <laughs> that has a big part to do with what spirit is trying to get through to me so that I can bring that out, not just in the weekly healing messages, but this is energies that we need to start to really put into perspective now, more than just for this week. This is the Roaring Twenties. The redo. The Roaring Twenties, the first time wasn't quite right. And we're being given a golden platform to get it right and arise up and out of that 3D and into 5D, where we're supposed to be. We're redoing the 20s correctly. Or we have the opportunity to redo the 20s correctly this time. And what I'm saying is, is a hundred years ago, the earth was 3D. It was the roaring 20s. We were letting our souls fire burn. But we were three-dimensional. So we weren't letting our souls fire burn at all. We were letting egos fire burn. That's the key here of shifting from the 3D to the 5D. Because what I keep getting for this year is burn, baby, burn. Burn that soul fire. This year is going to be a year of Capricorn. And I know we're hearing you know, we're coming into the year of Aquarius. We're coming into the time of Aquarius. And yes, but this year is all about setting that foundation. It's the building blocks. It's the impressions that last lifetimes. You people have been hearing me say this over and over again. It's Capricorn wants an investment on its return. But it doesn't want an investment just on a return, like financially. It wants an investment on its soulful, grounding, foundational building blocks that last lifetimes. 
And it wants to see that soulful energy, that 5D energy, return back to it. That is what this is about. This is about jumping past that ego idea. Your personal best is always enough. Your personal best is always enough. Unless you really didn't give it your best. You really didn't understand what your best was. You didn't do it from the heart and soul. That's the only time your personal best is not good enough. Spirit woke me up with this energy explaining. We are coming into truthfully rising into 5D and higher. Letting our soul burn, not our ego. And understanding the difference. With that, I will not be ostracized. I will not be ridiculed. I will not be belittled for being the best me I can be. But that means we have to figure out what being the best me is. And truly stepping up into that. Truly taking that chance. Everyone gets scared. Everyone gets scared of cha making changes, of stepping onto the platform of allowing the real world to see all parts of who and what they are. People are afraid they will be hurt. But this is part of soulful growth. You have to remember, during the first Roaring Twenties, it was a time of... Economic growth and prosperity. Progressive energy. It was the first wave of feminism. But because it came from an egotistical point of view, 3D. We made the mistake of being overconfident and reckless because we were coming from ego. Not from soul. Not from the soul's fire, the soul's truth, but from egos. See, if you remember, the reason this is so important for you to start getting right with trusting your own truth, trusting your own soul, trusting your intuition is because it was a first wave of feminism. But let's think about that. Feminine energy is creative energy. Feminine energy is the intuition. It is the magic that you are able to create and bring forward by getting into the depth of the soul. Then you add the masculine, which then brings it into fruition, makes it actual active energy but you must first connect with that feminine energy of that creative soulful intention of what you're here for what you desire what you burn for i will not be ostracized i will not be ridiculed and i will not be belittled for being me for being who i was meant to be and standing in my fire and not being afraid to show that to the rest of this world and show the rest of the world that you should be able to trust in who you are too. And I will not be shown that I have to follow society's rule when it's been wrong. And it's kept us from getting to the true depths of our own self and our own power. This is overcoming where we're uncomfortable with ourselves. And what other people may think about us. This is setting new foundations by trusting and strengthening the foundation of you so that you can cast it out into the world and 
turn it into the impression that lasts lifetimes. Remember, the Roaring Twenties was all about progressive energy, economic energy, growth, prosperity. But it also ended 1929 in the stock market collapse where the stock market crashed and the Great Depression came after because it was being led by ego, three-dimensional energies. We are now in an opportunity to truly take our time and grow and prosper soulfully and then bring that back to our investments of our returns soulfully on this planet in the outer community and bring it back to us. This is about trusting your intuition, trusting your higher self, getting in to communication with your own inner soul and doing what is right for the soul and telling everything else. I'm sorry, you gotta cut your cord or at least gotta start walking away. That doesn't mean just drop anything that you don't agree with. That means soulfully, what does it do for you? Does it soulfully support you? Does it soulfully nurture you? Because if it's not, then why are we still doing it? That is what we're coming into in this next 10 years so that we don't accidentally create another Great Depression and a collapse because we were raising ego, not soul. And I say that we're going to be seeing <coughs> Capricorn all year because, let's face it, Jupiter is now in Capricorn. You have Saturn, which is in Capricorn as well. Now, it's going to leave for a hot minute this year. And then it's going to be right back in for retrograde. And then it's going to have to go back forward again. So, truthfully, you're not going to see... Jupiter or Saturn enter Aquarius until 2021. This year is going to be powered by that. And then we'll go through Aquarius and then into Pisces with these energies. But we're definitely starting in Jupiter, figuring out the building blocks of the soul, standing into its power. This week, you have, on the 18th, you have Yura, which is moving in to Capricorn with the Sun, with Saturn, with Pluto, with Cirrus. Okay? Yura is sacrifice and commitment to the outer community, but doing it because you're doing it with something that nurtures you. Soulfully. Bringing back the investments that nourish the soul and the life and the existence you want. And are you putting the sacrifice and commitment in to creating that? Are you setting the proper rules, the proper boundaries? Are you soulfully rebirthing? Are you soulfully finding your fire to reignite it into your truth? On the 20th, the sun is moving into Aquarius. But on that same day, you have the moon is going to be teaming up with Mars in Sagittarius. I always say Sagittarius technically is, as far as I'm concerned, when you look at it on a universal level, it's speaking to us of the higher self without attachments. Mars is telling us the passion, the action, the aggression. Our moon is speaking to our our, our emotional depths of the passion, action, aggression that we should be listening to of our soul? And are you listening? As well as the sun moves into Aquarius, the higher waters being poured down 
into us. On the 22nd and the 23rd, the moon will be in Capricorn. With Cirrus, with the sun, no, the sun will have been gone, with Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, as it moves through all these energies, the key is, it's the threefold theory, Cirrus, even though her and Saturn are now in front of Jupiter, and let me tell you, all week, Jupiter is not getting along with the North Node. Jupiter in Capricorn is bringing you the higher knowledge and the abundance that you need to comprehend about the changes you need to make. But the North Node is saying, this is how you have to nurture yourself if you want to move forward. So do you have the balls to do it? Because Jupiter is bringing the abundance of what it is you don't want to have to do. Cirrus is reminding you, only you can nourish you. You are your own threefold. What you create, you willed upon yourself, whether you realized it or not. If you don't like your reality, change it. Where's the soul? And what does the soul fire tell you it needs? On the 24th, the moon and the sun are going to be on top of each other in Aquarius. This is where the fire fireworks are going to take place. Aquarius, I always say when you look up at the sky, you see the fireworks, but you don't know what they will be. This is where you're willing to step forward by listening to the inner depths of who you are and it'll bring that illumination up and out of you. On the 25th and the 26th, the moon is still in Aquarius. And now it's with Venus bringing up those sensitivities. Whether they're, <clears throat> I don't like that, and it's time to change it because the moon is going to be bringing its attention to you this week. The north node is bringing its attention to you this week. As well as that north node is squaring Chiron, the wounded healer. The wounded healer inside you already is telling you what you need to know to get it right. But will you have the courage? This year, this week, is about Starting the roaring 20s, roaring. But from a soulful aspect, does it nurture you or does it not? No more fibbing. And what do we do to make sure we are nurturing ourselves right? So we set the foundation and the impression that lasts lifetimes. I love you guys. Bye.